Okay, so uh, part three of this tutorial is basically pretty simple. It's just arranging songs and then tracking out. And um, the song arrangement is like any other thing, uh, any other sampler I've ever used, but um, with one difference. Uh, sorry, uh, second screen. So when you're in the sequence mode, you can see all your sequences, and then you see the song, and you think you could just kind of start manipulating it there, but you have to actually go to Command, Song Sequence, which is already on, Edit Song Steps, Enter. And unfortunately, I actually was doing a real-time video of this, and the file got corrupted, so you're seeing a pre-arranged song, but it's pretty much the same as anything. Step 1, put my intro, Step 2, my first verse, Step 3, second verse so on and so on and you know my hook so like any other sampler it's the exact same you just have to go to the command song sequence and the um, the uh, edit uh, song steps so that's basically it the other thing I want to touch on is tracking out and I normally wouldn't go over this because it's pretty much the same for every sampler but if you noticed how I did my MIDI tracks and my local tracks on this, it really makes it real easy to track out, and that's one of the reasons why I use uh, the instrument tracks like I do. So um, I'm just going to go to the sequence menu and start playing. Um, I'm going to go to a sequence with drums and all that. So. If you remember on uh, my MIDI status, I'm using a MIDI device and a local device. So, track 8 is local to the ASR. So, basically, to mute that, put it to MIDI. Now, it will trigger my ASR 10 or my uh, S. Uh, 2000 rack, but uh, when I'm recording it, I'm going to have the S2000 rack muted. Opposite with the MIDI stuff. Want to take out the snare, put it to local. Take out the kick, local. Take out the hats, local. So basically because of that, and I don't know why the snare is still triggering this thing uh, in video time, I could figure it out real quick, but I don't want to waste your time. So anyway, so that's how I'm going to track out, so um, now we're going to move over to Pro Tools and kind of show how this applies. Okay, just for clarification, uh, the reason why the snare was still hidden was because it was on uh, both instead of uh, local. And um, so now I'm going to track out the uh, sample part on my ASR10 that's on my ASR10's RAM so I've set all my MIDI on every channel to local which automatically mutes that so I'm just going to record a couple bars so you basically hit record in Pro Tools hit uh, play on the ASR10 and you're good to go and if you notice it records pretty low um, I have a direct in for my sound card but I found that uh, it doesn't really sacrifice quality. Um, I could boost it a little bit in my sounds card, uh, my sounds card mixer, the virtual mixer, but uh, I find that I get the best quality just recording it right out the box. So that's all I really need. Simple melody, you can see. So now I'm going to go back to the ASR10 switch some things up and um, you know get the uh, drums going so now we're gonna switch the mini status on uh, the snare real simple keep everything else local and because I'm recording uh, through uh, separate uh, inputs on my sound card it doesn't matter if the ASR is on MIDI I mean on local because it's not it's just not gonna uh, record that part. If I put it on MIDI to mute it, um, it's going to trigger my rack. But uh, if I was using only ASR stuff and I put it to MIDI and it didn't have anything to trigger, 
then uh, it you know it work exactly the same way as muting it. So if you have all your drums on uh, local tracks, you can put them to MIDI to mute them instead of going through uh, the typical way to do it, which I happen to find uh, easier to do it um, this way. Not just because I'm using MIDI, but in general, um, it just depends. If you're using multiple MIDI devices this way, it will not work. If you're using one, it works great. So back to Pro Tools. So now back to Pro Tools. Uh, we're basically going to record this the same way, um, except for now, uh, I just on the mixer, I'm going to turn down my uh, ASR-10, even though that's not the direct input for uh, my ASR-10, if I, and I can basically mute it on my mixer and just hear it while it goes. It's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to record just the snare right now. So basically I hit the record again. Hit play on the ASR-10. And uh, the snare will come in I think uh, right before the uh, fourth bar. So now you can kind of hear both tracks together, and I'm going to show you the fully tracked out version at the end of this. Um, take it off, record, and able start from the beginning, and this will be through my uh, computer only, not my mixer. So, um, yeah, I'm going to track the whole thing out and just let's show you what it sounds like uh, when it's done. I'm not going to really mix it down on the video, but uh, you'll see kind of, uh, you know, the beat. So I'm tracking out the last track right now just so you can get an idea of how the beat sounds. It's obviously not mixed. I go back and put a bass line and probably some percussion in, but... You know, just to show you, all tracked out, real easy way to do it, um, so, there you go, that's pretty much the sort of basics of, uh, the ASR-10, it's a real basic overview, and, uh, yeah, anyways, um, you know, I hope this helps some people, I know a couple people have hit me up struggling with it, uh, in terms of various things. I try to cover all my bases on it um, on a very simplified way and uh, if you want something more specific hit me up. Um, yeah, thirddegreethirdstop.com. Check out the forums. Uh, we're going to have a lot more videos now that I got a camera. Even though the quality it isn't quite up to par, it still uh, lets me do a lot more. So uh, yeah, check me out. Alright, peace.